So just a, a brief uh, summary, it was December 31st, 2019, uh, when uh, Wuhan, China, uh, reported to the WHO that they have an, a cluster of outbreak, uh, 41 cases of severe acute, acute uh, pneumonia, and uh, patients were a different mix at that time. Uh, Seventy-three uh, percent uh, were males. The median age at that time was younger, 49 years old. All of them, virtually all of them, had uh, abnormal chest X-ray on CAT scans and CAT scans. About 30 percent of them went straight to uh, acute respiratory syndrome and the death rate was high uh, at that time, uh, 15%. But that was just the first phase of the, uh, uh, of the uh, infection. Uh, the following week, the Lancet uh, published another paper, uh, 99 patients this time, uh, but uh, uh, it was changing a little bit. Uh, this time, the, the triad came up that's easy to identify, was fever, cough and shortness of breath, and uh, severe pneumonia on both lungs. Uh, there were some other things that they identified. For example, diarrhea was very rare, like 2%. Uh, they had experience with SARS. SARS at that time, if you recall, back in 2003, diarrhea was one out of three people. Here, this infection is a little bit different. Only 2% had diarrhea illness. And then, of course, the uh, largest study uh, paper came out of uh, China, 70,000 patients they uh, cohorted and they uh, produced the, the data, and this is where all, uh, a lot of our information regarding age and, and, and comorbidities came out. Um, 44,000 confirmed cases. Uh, the uh, age distribution has changed. Uh, 30 to 79 years old was 87 uh, percent, and uh, nobody uh, under 10 years old. So again, we're not sure why, but children are spared of this, uh, of this infection. Um, so that's good, actually. So uh, other features of this disease, based on that uh, publication, 81% um, had no pneumonia or very mild pneumonia. So that's reassuring. 14% um, uh, of patients age over age 80 uh, had a high face case, case fatality, and 8.9% uh, also 70 to 79 years, about uh, five deaths out of the, uh, of the health workers that were infected. This is today's um, map of WHO. Uh, basically, it summarizes all the uh, cases that's throughout the world. And Europe is now the new China. 90% of new cases are now uh, coming out of Europe, or non-China. Uh, uh, non so um, a lot of the uh, travel warnings are now based uh, out of Europe. Is it, is it burning out of China, or is Yes, it it's trending down. The new yeah. cases are now uh, uh, substantially trending down. It looks like all the classic uh, ways to control an infection, isolation, mitigation, uh, hand washing, is, is actually working. There's no treatment, uh, but uh, it's, it's working out in China. This is today's slide. Uh, this has the 808, uh, 808 total confirmed cases in the United States. Uh, 28 deaths, and uh, um, in California, uh, this is the uh, this is the most recent data from California. Uh, I see 24 cases are from repatriation flights, 109 confirmed cases, uh, some kind of relation to travel, uh, 28 cases spread from person to person, and about 19 we don't know where it's coming from. So we think. We are now at a stage where you can get infected even if uh, you had no travel history, no contact history, but it's less. The predominance is still some kind of travel history, some kind of contact, uh, confirmed contact. So we worry about uh, mortality. Let's compare uh, this infection to other infections that we know well. Uh, for example, the, the top line, top row there, 2019, this is the virus talking about. We're still not sure. Data coming out of Korea, who's more reliable, we think, because they, they don't have the same uh, uh, press suppression that China is able to do. It looks like it's less than, uh, less than 1% so far. Uh, Korea is able to test 10,000, uh, perform 10,000 tests a day, and their uh, mortality rate is pretty low. Uh, the other ones, for example, H1N1 influenza. This is from the New England Journal. Uh, 
0.02 to 0.4, so it's pretty low for uh, uh, influenza. The H7N9 uh, influenza, there was an outbreak which had a mortality of 39%. Uh, so it depends on which influenza uh, that occurs, uh, depending on the season. But SARS, the, SARS came out 2003, the mortality rate was about 9.5%. And MERS, that's the uh, Middle East. Uh, respiratory syndrome, uh, very similar also. It's another coronavirus. That's at 34%. And Ebola is the, uh, the bad boy, 63%. Uh, almost uh, two out of three people will, will die if they get the infection. So in terms of corona, it's, uh, it's on the low side, which is, which is helpful. Um, I'll skip through the virology. I presented this to physicians, so I'll skip through this. Uh, but basically, there are seven. If you look at the right side of the... Uh, of the screen, there's seven coronaviruses now identified. Four are what's circulating throughout the world, which causes a mild respiratory disease, like the common cold. The, the other three, five, six, and seven, are now uh, lethal. And uh, it looks like this virus evolves every 10 years. Um, influenza evolves every three to five years, so that's why there, every three to five years there's a big uh, outbreak. So this one looks like it's every 10 years so far. And it looks like uh, it's very close in uh, RNA match uh, um, to SARS, o almost 90%. Uh, some papers published up to a 99% uh, match. Uh, so it's, it's, it's similar to SARS in, in many ways. It's got a, uh, uh, it, we think it came from bats. We don't know what the middle uh, um, animal is, but at least both of them came out of bats. Ebola is also from bats, by the way. So it's transmitted uh, very easily by droplets. Um, so when you sneeze, you have a six feet distance. If you can stay away from someone who's sneezing about six feet, that reduces your risk. Uh, of course, it stays on objects for two to three hours. So if you open a door that has uh, the droplet and you touch your face, then you're inoculating yourself. So the advice is wash your hands frequently don't touch your face. That's another way, and stay away. Give a six feet social distance uh, if you can. If you're sick, please wear a mask. Stay home if you can, uh, et cetera. So those are the, the, the same guidelines that you've been seeing. Incubation is 14 days. Most people get sick within three to six days upon a full-blown inoculation. And uh, we always ask for the triad, fever, cough, and shortness of breath. That's what we look for. Okay, so testing. Um, it's use, it uses a technology called PCR, polymerase, polymerase chain reaction. And basically we get three, uh, three samples, one from your nose area, one from the throat area, and then a blood sample. And then these are, uh, uh, the testing is done that way. Right now I, was, I read that um, there's only two million uh, tests in the United States, and so there's a lot of rationing. Uh, I just received an email uh, this morning that uh, we are now, we may have capacity uh, to basically order the test without going through the uh, LA County Department of Public Health. Uh, but it takes a, a, a couple more days to set up. Treatment, um, there's really no double blind placebo controlled multi-center trial like what we should be doing. But uh, from the SARS experience, uh, there is a drug called uh, Kaletra, which is a combination drug, lopinavir and bertonavir. I use this drug uh, to treat HIV uh, uh, disease, and uh, it's also an RNA virus. And uh, one study that came out that's been quoted a lot is this one, uh, 41 patients who had SARS, and uh, the, the group that received SARS, uh, received Kaletra, uh, only 2% uh, mortality versus the group that did not receive a Kaletra had a 28% mortality. So right now, there's a, uh, there's kind of a, a lot of people are hoarding Kaletra, which, uh, which is uh, too bad. Uh, but we have Kaletra at, at both our hospitals, at AV Hospital and at Palmdale Regional, in case uh, we need it. Um, another uh, set of drugs that's been quoted a lot is remdesivir. This one was developed by Gilead uh, to uh, combat Ebola. But uh, in terms of uh, medication and vaccine development, it's hard to develop drugs for these infections because they burn out so quick. 
you know, uh, SARS came out in November 2012 and basically was finished by May 2013. Most of the Ebola outbreaks, they last six months, eight months. So it's hard to do studies uh, on drugs or on vaccines. But so far, uh, this drug is now available uh, through Gilead. There's a protocol that we go through, our pharmacists go through if we need it. We call them, we present them the case. They send us the intravenous and we, uh, we give it a loading dose and then a continuing dose. Um, and uh, in China, they're uh, using uh, uh, um, remdesivir to treat empirically uh, all patients they suspect have coronavirus. So uh, CDC guidelines on the right there, stay healthy, avoid contacts who are sick, don't touch your eyes, nose, and mouth, stay home if you can, cover your coughs, disinfect frequently objects uh, with sprays and wipes, um, and wash your hands often, and uh, count 20 seconds. Usually you just do a song in your head, happy birthday to you, or row, row, row your boat, and you should be okay, that's about 20 seconds. Uh, and then the California Department of Public Health also has guidelines. And now given this knowledge about the 70-year-old uh, uh, population, if you have heart disease, diabetes, lung disease, you're at higher risk. So the advice is if you can, uh, as Dr. Stock mentioned, um, try not to uh, go to, uh, to gather in large groups. Uh, at, our, at our hospital, we don't have uh, meetings of more than 20 people. If it, if it requires more than 20 people, we do uh, Skype or we do uh, tele, you know, tele meetings. Okay, that's all I have, thanks. Do you, do you see any possibility of it not reaching Lancaster? Probably not. It's, uh, it, it, it's gonna be like, a, like any uh, pandemic. It, it, it should get here, but uh, that's where we, we gotta be ready. I, I would add, uh, it was a great yeah. presentation. I, I would say a couple of things from a you know, patient viewpoint. One is, uh, this is a little different than the flu. The flu hits you and you pretty, feel pretty crummy like you're going to die, but most people do really well. This, on the other hand, is a slow rumble. You feel achy, you feel viral, feel chills for about a week. And about, for people who are going to get sicker about day eight, a lot of people start feeling a little short of breath, and they probably will, will show up uh, because it's see their doctor. Um, day nine, some people who are going to get bad end up in the ICU. So we got to be careful when we send people home or if people are staying home. Just kind of keep an eye on things for a while. It's, it's not all going to hit you in the first couple of days. Um, the other is about testing. Uh, so Jonathan mentioned about testing. Right now, the, I don't know what Palmdale is doing, but AV is uh, testing based on avail uh, the approval and availability of the public health department of LA County and CDC. Um, while Quest and LabCorp are beginning testing around the country, um, the hospitals are not doing what we want. People, people that are sick enough to get admitted will get tested, I'm quite sure, because they'll meet criteria. Um, and they're, they're, the CDC has pretty strict criteria. There's three flavors. You're either pretty well, but you're, uh, you have a direct contact with someone who's positive. That's a high-risk situation. Or you're sick enough to get admitted and you have a, some other epidemiological, like a travel history to Italy or you know, Japan or something. Or the third is you're really sick, you're in the ICU, and you're going to get tested just based on being sick. Um, if you don't meet any of those criteria and you're well enough to go home, um, you can go see your own doctor and your medical group or your, um, your private doctor can order the test from uh, LabCorp or Quest. It's probably the most efficient way to both trace the results. Get, it takes four days for it to turn around. So the hospital doesn't have a mechanism really to trace all these people, go back to public health. So that, that's the state of the art at the moment. That could change in the future though. Uh, we're really just getting started on this right now. But I would add that some country, we can learn a lot from a few other countries that are doing, I, I think if you look to South Korea, they've taken a very interesting approach to this, um, as well as Taiwan. Uh, South Korea, for instance, um, is testing everyone. They're tracking everyone. They came up with an app that if you walk proximity to somebody with the virus, the tested positive, your, your phone will go off. Okay, so they are, and, and so they have, they, if you look at the arc, if you go on the internet and look at the arc of cases, in 20 days they got, the, they peaked out and started coming back down. So it's a, amazing, it's worth looking at as an example for our CDC to look at. The second is uh, Taiwan. Taiwan is right next to China, right? They've had one death, 
all right? And, and because they learn from SARS, so they, they have a very strong public health approach um, to, to this. So um, we're trying to learn from everybody we can. Italy's going through a, a tough situation right now. They locked down the whole country, um, and things are difficult there right now. So um, there's good examples out there, and we're trying to learn from them. I, I, I have a question. Yeah. Um, so this is coming from gathering perspective. I, it, do you think the, the virus is starting to um, decline in the U.S. also, or is it growing? And the reason why I asked that, I noticed you said public spaces. So I'm a pastor, and Easter is rapidly approaching. That's one of the large, that's the Christian Super Bowl. So everybody that hasn't been at church usually comes out. We're talking five weeks away, literally. So I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, in the next five weeks, do you see it growing, shrinking? Because there's a lot of pastors out there that I've been getting in contact with, and we're trying to tell everybody to do the pound thing because I didn't want the mayor doing the ordinance to stop us from handshaking. So we're <laughs> trying to do the pound thing, but what do you, what do you think about that? It's, it's probably going to rise. I don't think this will uh, come down until... Uh, if you look at SARS, it was like eight or nine months later. So if we, if we start the epidemic uh, today, you probably have to wait until August or, or September to really see any, uh, any um, you know, to, for it to come down. Um, a, lot, a lot of people are now, a lot of uh, institutions are now doing things online. Berkeley, uh, I was told, uh, that is now switching over to uh, um, video uh, classes. UCLA, I think, is about to. Um, Harvard, I think, announced that next week it'll start uh, uh, sending the kids home and do everything online. Uh, so th there's that. There's that. Uh, when China, when this broke out in China, they, it was in the midst of their um, New Year celebration. It's like one of the biggest celebrations of the year. Everything was shut down because they didn't want it to, to spread in large crowds. I, I think we're learning new things every day. And to answer your question, you'll have to come up with a, a drop-dead date where you have to make a decision. Uh, I, I know other religious, the Pope is doing video, you know, you know, uh, you know, gatherings now rather than in, in you know, in real time. So, um, or at least live. So, um, I think what's happening is that um, when a community gets a case, if you look at the state of Washington, uh, Kirkland, what's going on up there? As soon as there's a case. People suddenly shut down the schools do, and take massive measures. We've, I think, uh, under the mayor's leadership, we, we've tried to stay ahead of this thing. And with information on the website, with what we're doing at the hospitals, we're ahead of things. So the question is, we may not want to wait till there's a case. We may, I think we can learn to see what's going on through you know, as we study everything uh, throughout uh, you know, joining states and, uh, and communities. Um, and uh, while I don't see any reason to make any changes at the moment, I think we need to look at it day, day by day. And uh, between, uh, you know, as we move forward through this thing. One, one word about uh, infectiousness. Um, this one, uh, influenza infects one person, can infect 1.8 people. Coronavirus, 2.2. Uh, Ebola, 3.3. Uh, the worst is measles. We know measles. Uh, 1 to 16. One, one measles case will infect 16 people. So we... You know, just, just the understanding the flavor that this is really contagious, but really uh, there are other more contagious pathogens around. So, I, I just want to be clear with you guys. You know, we're, we're relying on you to tell us when to start doing draconian measures, uh, and and I'll do them. I I can declare a state of emergency, uh, and once I do that, we can start doing whatever we need to do. But I, I don't want to do that based upon what I read in the LA Times. I want to do it based upon what you tell me. Uh, and so I just want to clear the, the level of responsibility that we're placing in your hands is, is pretty e extensive. I'm concerned about the, if the hospital's not letting people, over 20 people meet. What does that mean to the rest of us? Uh, does the city have a plan? To, to go online if we have to. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking in now into what we can and can't do under the Brown Act to make sure we're fully compliant and to make mm -hmm. sure that we also don't spread disease if and when it arrives. Okay, good. I, I would say things that where you're making a personal decision at this point, I, if people, you know, we discuss, if people are having vacation plans to go on cruises, I would postpone that cruise. If you don't, if you are planning on taking a flight for, um, 
uh, anything that's not of dire importance, I would postpone that travel um, if you could at this point. Uh, you know, there, everyone's going to make, you know, have risk things as far as schools and things. We, we've discussed the state of California just came out with guidelines about mass gatherings, universities and schools, I think two days ago or three days ago. And uh, uh, the city has that information and, and we will have to, you know, look at the situation and we'll, we'll tell you our honest opinion as, as uh, things evolve. Absolutely. Yeah. It, re recognizing that we're the aerospace capital of the world, this is the new handshake <laughs> in Lancaster <laughs> as of now. So if you don't know how to do it, you should start practicing. <laughs> I did, didn't I? It's really, it's really hard. But <laughs> I got hand sanitizer. Dude. <laughs> you went to Costco early. Yeah. Okay. Is there any other questions? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Transporter. That that's an IQ meter. <laughs> you didn't hear it, did you? <laughs> okay. So it, yeah, I'll, I'll call on anybody in the audience that has a question. Yeah, Fran. Uh, you mentioned is this caused by you said by bats? It's uh, originated from bats. Yes. And what about the bats that are here? in our own country, how, how, are, they, are, they, how are they affected in any way? I haven't seen any reports that the bats in this country uh, carry coronavirus, but I've seen that uh, the bats carry a lot of rabies. Right, yeah, I realize that. Yeah. And how can the, can the, um, the human being um, affect the rats? Uh, not the, I keep saying rats, the bats. In other words, can the bats get the disease from a human and then transport it elsewhere? I haven't seen that. So oh yes. That uh, can can a human infect a bat and then the bat transport the corona somewhere else? Um, I haven't seen that report either. Good question. I'm, I'm li the least of the worries we should have is the bats. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yes. Mr. Mayor, I had an observation, and the doctors could probably bear me out. I was just in the bathroom, and our low flow water system this is not advantageous to washing your hands. You have to hold a button with one thing, and it took me a long time to even get the soap off because of the pressure of the water. So if you washed up for surgery, you have to have some pressure of that water. And it just is a point that I realized just now about our bathrooms. They're not really conducive to hand I, I think you can use your elbows. Oh. You can use the ATM, use your knuckles. You don't have to use your... You know, this part of your hands is the part that's probably the most dangerous. So, I, I, right? I mean, I, I think that's one way to go. If you have a question, I, yes. Uh, my question is, uh, is there anything that we can take to boost our immune system that can uh, help prevent uh, uh, taking it uh, uh, to begin with? Um, the question is, is there anything that we can take to boost our immune system? Um, generally, there are no good studies showing that uh, whether it's vitamin C or, or anything like that, that it boosts your immune system. A lot of people take vitamin C because there was a couple of studies back in the 70s that says high dose of vitamin C, about two grams or more, can help uh, reduce infections, but those studies have not borne out. The same thing with uh, coenzyme Q or um, all the other herbal products. There's no good studies, but if it's uh, not harmful, uh, if it's uh, inexpensive, we don't we don't not recommend it. But uh, there's no there's no good uh, double-blind placebo-controlled you know classical studies. I, I, I would just say that most people feel that uh, if they're not getting enough adequate sleep, um, if they're not, uh, you know, under a lot of stress, they're probably a little more at risk for getting sick in general. And so staying healthy, eating well, sleeping well, taking care of yourself is probably a good policy. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of the city, we want to thank you. I mean, you guys aren't getting paid for this. You're, you're put, we get emails every couple of days from you, keeping us advised. We're, we're extremely appreciative of this, and the community should be extremely appreciative of what you're doing. Uh, we, we actually are able to take a proactive stance rather than waiting for somebody to come rescue us. Okay, thank you.